Welcome to Board Game Casual, continuing our one year anniversary extravaganza. At the very beginning of this year, I posted a video about the top 10 board games I'm most excited to play in 2024, which were currently sitting unopened on my shelf of shame. In this video, I thought it would be fun to check in on the progress, being that we're already halfway through the year. To recap, these were the 10 games from that list, along with an honorable mention. Love Letter, Green Team Wins, Adventureland, the Enchanted Forest expansion for one of my favorite deck building games, Runestones. The Hall of Heroes expansion for Raiders of the North Sea. Long Shot the Dice Game, Wingspan Asia, Millie Fiori. The Valhalla expansion for Champions of Midgard, Mosaic, and Flamecraft. Well, I'm happy to report that I've gotten eight of these 11 games to the table, leaving only three games that have yet to be played. Love Letter is a classic card game I had always heard about and was glad to finally get a chance to try. It's amazing how much fun you can get out of such a small deck. It did feel a little basic by today's standards, but certainly one I'm keeping on the shelf and looking forward to playing again. Green Team wins? Man, this one has already been getting a lot of mileage this year. It's so simple, but so fun. This has become my go-to game with non-gamers or a mixed group. With enough copies, there's no limit to the number of people that can play, and it's a really fun way to socialize. Adventureland was pretty interesting. I like how the card deck slowly reveals new items or things to discover on the board. And I like that push your luck element of whether to jump out way ahead to snatch something up before someone else does, or to hang back and see what else is revealed along the way. Because the one thing you can never do is go backwards in this game. It did feel a little dated playing it for the first time here in 2024, and while I certainly want to play Adventureland again, it's going to be a little tough choosing to pull this game to the table over something else. Overall, it's a fun game, especially for the $15 or whatever I was able to buy it for. Wingspan Asia is without a doubt my new favorite way to play Wingspan with two players. It's awesome that this has everything you need to play in a scaled down box, including a totally different set of bird cards and some player boards with new art. But what really makes this shine is the additional scoring module and sideboard. It really opens up the strategy in the game, giving you some fun new things to think about and new paths to victory. Millie Fiori is the most recent of the list that I've gotten to the table, and this game does not disappoint. It looks a lot more complicated than it is. At its core, it's a card drafting and tile placement game. Essentially, you're drafting a single card that will let you place one of your visually and tactilely satisfying see-through colored tiles on a space in one of the six different scoring areas on the board. Each area has a different way of scoring, and some areas let you rack up points by chaining your tiles together, and other areas let you build off of your opponent's tiles. What's really cool is when you can score a bonus that lets you choose and play a free card from the market, which in itself might trigger another bonus and another free card. In some ways, this game reminds me of Azul Summer Pavilion, but if everyone were playing on the same board. The game feels really snappy, turns are super quick, and I want to say it plays in under an hour. Overall, it's a great add to the shelf, fun for seasoned gamers, but I also think it's another good one for when I have people over who are still relatively new to board games. It's super easy to teach. I'm definitely looking forward to playing Millie Fiori more. The Valhalla expansion for Champions of Midgard takes one of my favorite games and makes it so much better. I totally get why people say this expansion is a must-have. It feels like it should have been part of the game to begin with. The Valhalla tokens you get for any of your warriors who die in battle not only help mitigate some of the risk, but also add another level of strategy to the game and more ways to score points. Going forward, I don't ever see playing Champions of Midgard without the Valhalla expansion. Mosaic, A Story of Civilization has probably been my favorite game from the list so far. This is a big game. The setup and rules are a bit of a slog, but when you get going, this game just has such fun, quick, snappy turns. I'm really eager to get in more plays, and right now, Mosaic is definitely a frontrunner for making my favorite new-to-me game of 2024. And finally, Flamecraft. 
I've gotten to play this game a few times now and I like it more with each play. This is a fun little worker placement game that has a great table presence, made even better with these cheap metal dragon coins I found on Amazon. This is another great game that's easy to teach and great for board gamers as well as those just getting into the hobby. Overall, I've made good progress, especially considering that the games on this list have to compete with even more new games I'm picking up and that whenever I get together with friends, there's usually a bunch of new games they want to get played too. I'm certainly hoping I'll be able to finish off the list and get the last three played by the end of the year. I'm chomping at the bit for the next time I have a big group over and can try out Long Shot the Dice Game. It's probably the one I'm looking forward to most of the three. That said, I've got some new heavy hitters that have recently joined the unopened shelf of shame. I picked up Revive a couple of months ago and my girlfriend gifted me a copy of Moonrakers. I really, really want to try both of these games. I mean, I've wanted Revive ever since it came out and man, Moonrakers, I don't play a lot of games with temporary alliances and negotiations, so it's very likely that these might cut the line. If you've played any of these games, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. I'd also love to hear what's on your shelf of shame to get played this year. And just as a reminder, I'm hoping to cap off the one year anniversary extravaganza with a video of viewer Q&A. So please add your questions that you'd like me to answer down in the comments or email them to me. I look forward to answering them in that video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for liking and subscribing. And I'll see you next time here on Board Game Casual.